Okay, I trust everybody can see that. So, uh, this is uh, part two of our presentation that uh, that I did last week. This is the part where we're going to actually uh, work on uh, programming the decoders uh, themselves. So, as a review, uh, this is what we covered in part one. Uh, we we understood what a Marklin tri protocol decoder is, and we understood how they work with the IntelliBox two and our understanding that uh, there's a need for our module group to uh, change the address ranges or to have a group of address ranges that are for the older Marklin Motorola chips and another group of addresses that are for DCC. And that way we don't have to keep changing what an address values uh, protocol is on the IntelliBox. So this presentation, we're gonna cover uh, understanding our uh, decoder programming environment and uh, changing the basic uh, parameters uh, with the IntelliBox 2, just the basic parameters, and then we'll go into actually changing an address, okay? So first of all, uh, some basic terms and information. So on an IntelliBox, there are actually two outputs. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a regular track output on the back of the IntelliBox. This would be what we control our, our uh, module with. And then there's also a, uh, another output, which is that goes to a programming track. And that's a special track where you, and you can do some programming on the main, but we won't get into that this evening. Now, the way we have this set up, again, we don't want to be messing around on the main line or on something that we might accidentally program it incorrectly uh, on the uh, uh, main line. So we have two IntelliBoxes, one of them, is connected to the, to the layout, this was, as we've always done. And our second control box is connected to the, uh, to the programming track. And this is where we're going to, where you can go in and change your locus address or test it or whatever. And there are two totally separate boxes, a cable on the inside of the layout. You could mess around and if you screw something up, you're not going to affect the main running of the layout for our uh, visitors, okay? So uh, let's talk a little bit about this. This is something that AJ built. And just to point out what the parts are, very simple. Uh, this is the programming track, obviously. Uh, this is a Trano that provides the power for the IntelliBox. The red, the red knob does absolutely nothing. In other words, it doesn't control the train. It doesn't change, turn the, the juice up and down. We're simply taking the, the light output, if you will, from this old Marklin transformer and using that to power this, okay? Uh, this is a selector switch. So if you're going to be adjusting a three rail locomotive, you put it on this way. And if it's two rail, you go this way. All right. And obviously this is our IntelliBox too. Hey, hey, Stretch, sorry to interrupt. Can you make me a co-host real quick? I did. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yep, thanks. Um, so uh, if you, uh, let's talk a little bit about bits and bytes and stuff. We're going to talk about changing CVs. And if you should go out and uh, try to, you know, just Google changing uh, model railroad CVs, you're going to go down a rabbit hole of some pretty scary technical information, I'm afraid. You're going to be seeing things about binary, and you're going to see things about hexadecimal values. And you're going to see things about bits and address partitions and decimal values and bytes and extended packets and registers yes. and shift registers. And I, uh, yeah, I mean, this is exactly the way I felt about the whole thing when I saw this, uh, you know, kind of scary. Uh, the good news is that the IntelliBox makes all this go away. And I think frankly, a lot of the controllers do, but when you start looking at that, I'm not sure why that's all out there. And there's guys that get off on that aspect of the hobby and that's wonderful but it's way beyond what I learned in school so I'm not going to worry about that stuff. Let's talk about CVs uh, and again some basic information here. What are CVs? So CV stands for configuration variable okay the C and the V right and they are a series of numbered buckets in a decoder where information about the characteristics of that particular decoder are stored. So examples, so CV bucket no, one is where the locomotive address is. And in CV03, 
that's the place where the acceleration rate is stored. And four is the braking delay and five is the maximum speed. And, you know, CV63 is where the volume level for the speaker is controlled, as an example. So a table of CVs that you can change uh, is usually found with a manual that came with your LOC or your decoder. So this is a, you know, if you have a Markle locomotive and you flip to the back of the little pamphlet that came, you'll often see a little booklet that looks like this with multi-languages and so on. So we're gonna take a look just as an example of uh, at CV63 volume and how we change that on the IntelliBox. And if we look at this table, we can see that CV63, CV number 63 is indeed the volume. There's all the various languages. We can also see that the range that we can set it to is in the numbers from one to 255. Okay, that's the range of the values we can put it there. So we, we note that the, uh, the maximum is, uh, is 255, but on some of the older systems like the 6021 or even the mobile station, the maximum is 63, just because of uh, what, those, what those stations can control, all right? So I'm gonna, now gonna just kind of go through a short little video uh, that tells you how you would change the volume level to CV63 on your locomotive. All right, we're going to go ahead and change uh, the uh, sound, the volume level <clears throat> on this uh, decoder. But the first thing we've got to do is we've got to figure out what the current volume is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into mode over here, the mode button and it pops up this screen and we're going to go into where it says decoder programming here we're going to press that button and because this is a dcc decoder we're going to press dcc and we're going to go into cv programming right here and the cv we're interested in is cv number 63 because we know that from our table we press that in there, and we'll press the enter key. So now we have CV63, and the value we want to put in there, we don't know what it is. But let's find out what's in there now. So we'll press read, and it says process is active, and it comes back and it tells us that the value is 255. Now maybe that's the right volume for us, and maybe it's not. We don't know yet. So what we'll do is we'll hit the menu key to get out of this screen. And we have already called up three. We had done that before. So we'll press um, we'll press F3, which we know is the horn for this loc. So we'll press F3. Wow, that's that's pretty loud. Maybe okay for the module setup, but certainly in my home environment, that's too darn loud. So let's change it. So we'll go back again. We'll go to mode. We'll go to decoder programming again. We'll go to DCC. We'll go to CV programming. And it kind of remembers, since we haven't gotten out of this session, it remembers that we were working on CV63. And it also remembers what the, the value was in there. So we're going to change that value. Now, I've done a little bit of uh, testing beforehand, so I kind of know what I want to do. I'm going to lower that down to 190. Now, also notice the uh, all the bits and bytes and all this stuff along here. We'll talk about that in a moment or two. So let's change the value here from the default, the loudest, 255. Let's lower it down to 190. So we press 190. And then we'll press the enter key. It's in there. And now we'll press the programming key. Program it. So the process was active. Now we'll hit menu, which will get us back out of this area. And uh, so let's test it now. Let's try F3 again. Not nearly as loud. I think I like that better. So I'm going to leave it there. OK, and that's how we change a uh, a CV value on the IntelliBox 2.
Okay. Now I'm sure everybody uh, you know, took every word that I said and has it totally memorized. You could do it at a moment's notice, no problem. Uh, but just in case you can't, this is kind of, these are the steps that we went through. Um, you needn't uh, do a screen grab or anything unless you want to, but I will actually print a copy of this little page out and we'll put it in our binder so that we have that there. So if you want to go in and change uh, any one of the CVs, you can just follow this, this basic step or these basic steps, okay? So that's the basics there. Uh, whoops, no, what happened here? I've got the wrong way. Let's use my arrows again. All right, now let's talk about what we're really here to talk about, our objective that we, from our presentation last week, we, if you remember kind of at the end of it, the whole culmination of that thing was that we need to take our uh, tri protocol and, and DCC locs, and we want to make the address on those greater than 255, okay? And the reason we want to do that is that way we don't have to keep going back into the IntelliBox and changing formats uh, from Mo Markle Motorola to, to DCC and so on. It eliminates all that confusion that with many operators controlling the same, the same system. So that's what we're trying to achieve. So how do we go in and change our address to an address larger than 255? So that's pretty good. We can just go in, we, you know, you guys that were sharp and read that table that popped up, it was, we said CV1, that changes the address of our, that's the, how, how you, where you store the, the LOC's address. And so we can put in a number that's larger than 255 and we're off to the races, right? Well, not really. Uh, that's, there's a little bit of a snag here and I'll talk about that. So the numeric value, which could be stored in a CV, has to be in the range of one to 255. So unfortunately, that's a bit of a problem for us because we want our DCC addresses to be larger than 255. It turns out that CV01 is what is called the short address. And uh, so, and so you can only store in that short address numbers between one and 255. However, the good news for us is there is a way to have a long address, and that address can be a number from 256, all, or well, from actually it could be addressed from 1 to 9,999. That's what we want. But you know, how does that all work? A long address can be created by putting values in both CV17 and 18. Hmm, how do we put one number in two addresses? Well, that's kind of tricky. And then we've got to go into CV29 and we've got to set up, we've got to set bit five to a one. And oh boy, here we go again. We got bits and bytes. We're talking bits and bytes. Not so good. We don't like that stuff. But don't worry, the IB makes this easy to do. Okay, we're going to talk about how to uh, how to actually change an address to a long address uh, on the IntelliBox. So uh, currently the address of the locomotive we have is the default, which as you can see here is, is 03. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. So what we'll do is we'll go into the mode key and we're gonna go into decoder programming over here. And we're gonna go into DCC. DCC. But rather than go into CV programming the way we did before, uh, to adjust some of the CVs, we're going to go into something called CV Clear Text, and we'll print that. We'll push that here. And what this is is this is a listing of the various uh, basic settings, so the address, the minimum speed, mid speed, etc. And uh, it's just kind of the key indicators. So we're going to read those. We'll press read, and you can see it's going to step through here. It's going, uh, you can see it's step two, step three, so on and so forth. And it'll go through about nine steps. And it's the, the locomotive that's on the test track is uh, jiggling a little bit, stuttering, as they say. And this is going to give us the, uh, come back and give us all the basic readings. So here it says, okay, our address is three, our min speed is five, our mid speed is zero, our max speed is 240. And if you use this down arrow, you can toggle through a couple more. Let's see, just for fun, there it is, the DCC configuration, and the manufacturer is 
Trix in this case. That's the manufacturer of the, the chipset, even though it's a Markle locomotive. So let's go back up here. We didn't need to do that. Um, so now that we've known that, we're going to change this address. And the way we'll change the address is uh, by pressing this again. And we're going to do uh, 834 in this case is what I'd like to make this locomotive. So we've entered those. We'll hit the uh, enter key. And so now everything's the same as it was, except that 834 is what we want. Now we're going to pr press the programming key. And again, it's going to step through. And if you recall, uh, it stepped through about nine steps when we were reading it. And it seems to hang at four. And it turns out that that's just because it's finished. So what we can do is we can hit the menu key. And then we'll go into loc. Uh, 834 just to kind of test things out make sure that it all worked 834 and then just for fun I'll, I'll press the the horn and that's fine or the lights or to operate it or whatever so it's that simple to change the address to a long address All right, so once again, I'm sure that everybody got every bit of that and they could do it in their sleep. Not a big deal, right? Um, again, like anything else, if you do it a few times, it's, it's pretty simple. But if you don't do it very often, it's, uh, you're going to have to go back and look at the, your crib sheets or your, your uh, secret decoder ring or something. So I'll provide this. This is, uh, again, let's take, go through the steps here. So you go into the mode key. You go into the you press the decoder programming key. And I will print all this out and put it in our manual. Um, and that brings up this screen here. And then we press the DCC key. And it comes up with this screen. And again, this, in this case, we don't want to do CV programming. We want to do CV clear text. And it brings up this screen, which is all the, uh, the values, the basic values. We're going to press read so we get those into the memory of the IntelliBox. And the, the load that's on the programming track is going to stutter or jiggle back and forth a little bit till we know it's active. And the, the, in the middle of the screen, there'll be a, a little thing that shows up and says uh, process active, step one, step two, step three, et cetera, through nine steps. And again, eventually it'll, get, it'll populate the, uh, the, the basics for that locomotive. And there we'll see that the, uh, since this is a virgin uh, DCC, it's going to pop up at the address is that number three. And again, we don't want to have a ton of number threes. We want to change that. So we'll go into the address. And again, you can see here that the uh, address range that it'll allow you to do is from one to 9,999. So you can pick whatever number you want. In my case, I put 834. Um, I'll key that in. And then I'll press the enter key, key that looks like that little arrow thing there on the, on the right-hand side. And, uh, and you'll now see that that is up there in the, in the box. It's 834, but we haven't put it in the decoder yet. It's simply in the IntelliBox telling it this is what we want it to be. And then what we'll do is we'll press the program key over there on the right-hand side. And it'll step through step one through, it'll stutter again. And it will uh, go through steps one through four. And again, it's going to appear to hang. Why it hangs and doesn't say, hey, I've got it done, I don't know. It doesn't seem very elegant to me, but that's just the way this system works. And uh, the programming is complete. And uh, to exit and get out of this, we'll go into, uh, we'll press the uh, menu key. It's on the, the blue key there on the right-hand side. And then we're going to test to make sure everything is, is okay. So we'll go in and we'll press loc, and then we'll go and we'll enter our, uh, whatever number we changed it to, in this case it was 834. And then we'll press the enter key, and then we'll control the loc. And a little caution on controlling your loc, make sure you don't go hog wild, or you're gonna run that program, your loc uh, right off the programming track or right onto the floor, so be careful about that. A better way might be to press function zero just to turn on and off the lights. Okay, that might be a better way to, to test to make sure that you're, everything took. Here's one more suggestion for you. Once you've changed it, uh, and again, this can be, everybody's got a different scheme. 
I mean, you know, I happen to be using sequential numbers in the 800 series. I know my buddy Charlie here is using uh, numbers in the 900 series. I know other guys that say, I, you know, I'm going to try to pick the, uh, the road number or part of the road number off the locomotive. I'll put in uh, this one is 1034. So I'll put that in. All those are good schemes. Nothing wrong with it. The bad news is if you forget it. And so a uh, good idea to either write it down someplace, put it in a little manual that you have in your, in your carrying case, make a list of them. In my case, uh, I put a little uh, label on the bottom, but that's just me because I'm kind of anal about stuff like that. So, so pretty simple, right? And, and actually it really is once you've done it a few times and you, you know, and, and you don't get intimidated by it. So I'm going to email out this presentation so you can play it back if you'd like to. And I will also put a copy of the, the two processes, the one on how to change just a basic CV and then another one on how to change a, uh, a long uh, address. I'll put those in the group binder. End of presentation, guys.